Hi, I'm Jamie, and I am the creator of One World, Your Story, where we bring people together. And right now, we need this more than ever. The murder of George Floyd, the latest of countless Black Americans to be murdered at the hands of police in America, has set off a chain reaction across the United States. People are angry, people are hurt, and rightfully so. We cannot stand by and allow this to continue any longer. It's time to use our voices and bring this conversation out into the open for good. So join us for this episode of The Floyd Files. I think we need, we need everyone involved in this. Because you know what? We can't do this ourselves. We need help. We need everyone to agree in this. It can't just be Black people saying, hey, we need justice. We need to feel equal. We need to feel safe. It can't just be us saying it. It needs to be everyone saying it because that's how the change happens. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Jamie here for another episode of the Floyd Files on the One World Your Story podcast. And today I am joined by Derek Lugo. Is that how you say your last name, by the Lugo, way? Lugo, yes. Rhymes Lugo? with uh, Hugo. Perfect. Okay. So here with Derek Lugo, the author of The Unlikely Through Hiker. Um, I cannot wait to dig in and hear your journey. We're not really going to be talking about the book today, but there's kind of no way to talk about all I'm the things here. we're going to be talking about. <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> Come on. Um, there's no way to talk about what we're going to be talking about without talking about your book. Um, or the but, adventure of, of the book. Yeah, or the adventure of all of it. Um, so, but what we are here to talk today about is race and racism in the United States and all of the many myriad of layers that come along with that. And with that, there's a lot of layers. So as it relates to your book, we're going to be talking about nature and the wilderness and hiking as it relates to race and racism, um, which as somebody who grew up in Denver, Colorado, um, and loves the outdoors, I'm very excited to talk about that. Um, so I want to kick us off with a question I'm dying to ask you because I I've sat here, I don't know if anyone's listening, if you know about the Appalachian Trail, it starts in Georgia, correct? Mm -hmm. Starts in Georgia and it ends in Maine. Um, and 200 miles, 14 states. Yeah. Okay. 200 miles, 14 states. 20, 2200 miles. Excuse me. 2200 20, miles. Not 200. 2200. <laughs> like 200 miles didn't sound right as I said it. Okay. <laughs> 2200 miles, 14 states on average. How long does it take to do it? Uh, people go like five months, six months. I did it in six months cause I okay. could have done it sooner. Um, but, um, finished it sooner, but, uh, I just didn't. I had a great time and I just wanted to uh, just enjoy every part of it. So, but yeah, people will normally do it five to six. They'll complete it between five to six months. Okay. That is if they complete it. Now you mm -hmm. decided that you're going to go hike this Appalachian trail and you've literally never hiked or camped a day in your life before you went out and started this thing. How the heck, why? Like, I'm a why not girl, but like, how the hell did you decide I'm going to go do something like this and never hiked a day in your life? Tell me about that. Yeah, I swear when I decided this, now I'm like, what the? But when I decided this, I was like, doesn't, doesn't everyone do this? I didn't think it was out of the ordinary. Uh, and then at, when I started later on, there was other reasons why it was really crazy, especially for me, um, looking the way I was, being who I was or who I am. But I, um, I'm a big reader. I read uh, years ago. This must have been um, maybe 15 years ago. I read um, someone handed me this book because they knew I loved to read. And they were like, dude, read this. It's a funny read. You're going to dig it. Um, and it was... Uh, um, a walk in the woods and it was about it was funny but it was about his hike through the Appalachian Trail and when I finished it the one thing that stuck out yeah it was a funny book but the one thing that stuck out was that it was hilarious uh, not only that it was hilarious but this trail that not many people get to many people try to uh, accomplish it but not many people finish it and 15 20 years ago less so and uh, it stuck in the back of my mind 
but it was one of those things where, yeah, you know, I want to travel the world. I want to run a marathon. I want to hike the Appalachian Trail. I didn't know if I was ever going to do it, but it was there. And I just happened to be in uh, a, a place in my life where I had, I didn't have responsibility of a job. Um, I had just came back from Europe. I was living in Italy for about a year. So I had time. My, my apartment was uh, subletted, so I didn't have, you know, I didn't have all these bills or anything. And I had time to really explore and do some amazing stuff. And I remember laying in bed. It must have been like, it was super late, like 12. No, no, it was like 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning. And I was just laying in bed, couldn't sleep. I was like, what am I going to do now? And it just popped in my head that I wanted to hike the Appalachian Trail with no experience at all. And I, I didn't even know if I liked hiking. All I knew about the Appalachian Trail was that it went from Georgia to Maine. That was well, it. And you I, knew maybe some funny stories from that book that you read. But I, yeah, but I had decided. And also that book, Bill Bryson made it sound, made the AT sound so hard. AT short for the Appalachian Trail, for those of you who don't know. But I'm so used <laughs> to saying the AT. For um, those of you who aren't cool enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, that's not. Some, some people I know, I know. I'm just being a jerk, uh, sorry. I don't know where I was going with this. Oh, so he made it sound, Bill Bryson, the author of um, Walk in the Woods, made it sound so hard. Um, and he, he was so negative toward it. And I was like, there's got to be more to it. Um, it was a challenge. I would, during that time of my life, I wanted just a big challenge. And that was the biggest challenge during that time of my life. And uh, I just decided to go for it. So within a few days, I would say a week and a half of deciding that I was going to hike the Appalachian Trail, I was I was on the trail. Bought my gear. I went to um, I went to the Outfitter REI, and at the time there was Eastern Mountain Sports Store. I walked in and I was like, "Hey, I'm going to through hike the Appalachian Trail. Help me get some gear." And the guy was like, "Okay, so what kind of pack do you normally use?" And I'm like. I don't know what you're talking about. I have no idea. I've never hiked before. I don't know. And he was like, what? And you got a through hike? So it was, uh, he, he ended up selling everything to me. And then when I walked away, he, I looked back and he was just like, this dude is going to get himself killed. He doesn't know what he's ah, doing. But I love the investment, by the way. Pardon? Do you remember how much that investment was, by the way? So we're going to talk more about um, why, uh, a lot of black black people don't hike the Appalachian Trail. One of the reasons is that it's just, it's expensive. Unless you have gear that goes that that's handed down from like family member to family member or father or son or whatever, it gets pretty expensive. To through hike the Appalachian Trail at the time, it might be a little bit more. It was a dollar dollar fifty a mile, so it's like about three thousand dollars to through hike to have to like for oh, the supply and this and that. But um, that's it. That's it. Right. Like that's your cost but, for but, six oh, months. No, no. But that's, but then you also have to include the gear. So the gear I must've spent. Oh, God, I don't remember. Oh, I it thought like you were baby. including that in the price that you were mentioning. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. That's uh-huh. easily what, say, another two and grand and probably. What's that? Easily another two grand probably. Maybe I did maybe like 1500. I know okay. I got the, at the time, the what I thought was the best gear to get. Um, and I ended up using everything that I had throughout my entire hike. I, in fact, I would probably use the same gear, a few changes here and there, um, maybe lighter trekking poles. Uh, and the guy uh, set but, you up good at REI. What's that? I said the guy set you up good at REI. Yeah, no, they hooked, they hooked me up. So it was, it was set. So I just went within a week and a half. I was on a trail and just started hiking. Didn't know what I was doing. Incredible. Truly like unbelievably inspiring. I have a tattoo here on my arm. It says, why not? Um, which is my motto. And I kind of feel like that's it. You're like, I'm going to do this. I had this opportunity in my life. When am I going to have none of these re- attachments and responsibilities? I know I've wanted to do this since I read this book. Fuck it. I'm going for it. Why not? And it's so, really so inspiring. It's, it's funny that you, it's funny that you mentioned that. I have to cut you off. Sorry. But it's funny that you mentioned that because the one of the chapters is called Why the AT. One of the chapters of my book uh, is, is called Why Not. And at the end, I go, why not? Why not? So, you know, I, I, no, I totally literally, agree. Like, because... 
you could want to do something and you'll have, you'll have that drive, but you'll have so many other reasons why you shouldn't do it. In fact, those reasons may be more than you just wanting to do something amazing in your life. I I think most often they are. (laughs) Yes. You'll end up with any endless amount of reasons why not to do something. But what you really need to do is, do you want to, what you really need to think about is, do you want to grow old and think about your life and say, hey, I wish I would have done this. I wish I would have done that. I'm telling you, right. I'm a storyteller. In order to, to be a storyteller, you need stories to tell. And that's why I, one of the reasons why I did the AT. And uh, I, I want to grow old. I want to be that old guy that has stories to tell the youngins. Fuck you know? yeah. And I, I'm not going to have those stories if I stay at home and say, you know, Appalachian Trail, that's, that's a scary place. That's a scary thing to do. I'm not doing it. You know, I'll, I'll read about it. No, absolutely. It's life and have yeah. stories to tell. Do it. Exactly. Exactly. And shoot, if there's anything we know today, when uh, our passports basically are worthless right now, that's not true. worthless, but they're like nothing. It's like when you have the opportunity to do it, fucking do it because yeah, like, you don't, tomorrow you, brings. And the point is, is that you don't need to go to Europe or leave the country. To do in a make like I lived in Italy for almost a That's year, a and I, I traveled all over Europe, and I and I realized that I didn't know a lot about uh, my where I'm from, the United States, and that was one of the reasons why I wanted to do the AT. And I traveled now; I've traveled all over um, the U.S., hit a lot of major uh, cities, and I can talk about just about every city. But there's the mountains, the views on the Appalachian Trail, I had people from Germany and different parts of the world hiking the same year I did it. And they were, they were like, dude, you can't find this in anywhere else. You have it right here in America. Well, that's why I've started to fall in love with hiking. And it's actually it's so funny that you say that because, as you know, I told you I was a nomad before all of this. And one of the things I did during that time, which didn't last very long, is I got this car and I was planning on going and doing all the national parks with my dog. Um, but he passed away and that kind of changed my plans. But part of what I realized in doing that is there's so much beauty right here. I mean, some massive fucking country that we're living in. And by the way, this is a great segue to get back to the United States and America and what we're talking about today. And it's funny that you mentioned that hiking is kind of a deterrent because it's expensive. It's so, it's, it's really weird, not weird. Interesting that you mentioned that because one of the things that I was thinking and Harry, my business partner and the producer of this podcast, who Harry, you know very well, <laughs> he's listening probably. You can give him a shout out if you want. Yeah. Uh, Harry, if you're there, say hi, type hi. Um, we were hiking, was it last year or the year before in the Hudson Valley where he lives now, which I, I want to say we were in Brooklyn and we drove for like an hour to get out there, right? It's not that far. When we were out there, we ran into this couple. I, I think they were friends. They were not a couple. Um, but the one person, it was a, I want to say it was a white guy and a black guy. And black guy had literally never been on a hike before in his life. And I was like, what? You know, cause I'm from Colorado. I'm like, how is that possible? You're only an hour away. You had never been on a hike before, before you went to the Appalachian Trail, the AT. Um, and you told me before we got on this call, which we got to dig into, that in a six-month time period, how many other Black men did you see? Or let's say men of color. So, and I didn't realize this was a thing uh, when I started hiking the Appalachian Trail, um, but people would come up to me and tell me, they would say, hey, love that you're on the trail. Um, it's great that you're here. And I, I still didn't know what they were talking about. I was like, well, I'm glad you're on the trail and it's great seeing you here, you know, <laughs> just playing along, just get, you know, getting to know people. Oh, so you had no idea what anyone meant yeah. or why they're, be- okay. And Did then, it feel extra to you at the time when they first no, started no, saying no. it? Okay. Um, it didn't feel extra, but uh, moving forward, from that, like I ended up being like, you know, like a mini celebrity on a trail because I was the only black person on the trail. So people were coming up to me, and this is something you probably wouldn't do if you're in a city <clears throat> or outside of hiking or on the Appalachian Trail because this is a different world. And 
It's like if I'm in on the streets of New York City, I'm not going to be waving and talking to everyone. But on the trail, and I was known to do this, I would always get to camp late. I, if I saw someone on the trail, I would stop and start talking to them. Because we're in the wilderness, in the woods, not a lot of people around. Sometimes there are, if you're near a trailhead or something, <clears throat> but for the most part, you're by yourself. Uh, unless you're hiking with other people. But when you see someone, you're like, hey, how you doing? And you start striking a conversation. So people are coming up to me saying, you know, like, you're you're like the first black person I've seen on a trail. Uh, and someone else in the Smokies, this older guy, he must have been like in his 70s. Smokies, there's a bunch of different uh, trails um, besides the AT. And he was going south, I was going north. And he stopped and he stood in front of me. And he was like, without even saying hello, he was like, look, I've been hiking these trails uh, for how many years, 15, 17 years, it's in the book, I forgot how many years, but, um, he said, you're like number, you're the fifth or sixth person I've seen, black person I've seen through hiking the Appalachian Trail, and it wasn't one of those things where people were like, hey, you're black, what are you doing on the trail? No, it was one of those things where people were embracing me, they, they were like, oh my god, we love that you're out here, you know, there were, people wanted to include me in this thing, they want to, you know, diversify the trail. It was, which was something still I couldn't wrap my mind around. But once I realized it was a thing, I was like, there's no way I had the same reaction you had. No way that I can't be, that can't be true. And I come from New York city where it's in my, in my experience, the melting pot of the world where it's all different types of people, different flavors. And it just doesn't cross my mind. You know, I know people say they don't see color. Yeah, I see color, but I choose not to see color in the way that other people may. Hey, you know, you're black. You're, no, it's just I have I have friends from all over the world that are different. I like to call them flavors. And um, so for me, it didn't it wasn't a thing. And then when people brought it up, I was like, whoa, I have this can't be this can't be real. This can't be right. So I kept while I was hiking, I kept an eye out <laughs> for a black person and I did not see one. When I did see one, I was like, oh snap, there's, there's a brother out here. And he was just doing like a day hike. And, and again, was one of those dudes that had never hiked before and he's just doing a, a, a hike with his white friends. But- Wait, 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 wait. I wanna pause yeah. there real quick. Yeah, yeah. So you're saying that you kept your eye out when you did happen to see a black brother as you called him, it's happened to be a person that was only there for a day and happened to be their first hike. Yeah. 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 What the fuck? Just, okay. Right? So it is a real thing then. It's, it's a thing. It's a thing. Um, and I, it took me a while again to wrap my mind around it. Cause I was still determined to like see black people out there. Um, but I the like, people, but the people ahead. that were out there hiking, uh, with me, White people, there was people from Germany and uh, Switzerland and all that, but basically all white. Uh, they were, they were, they wanted more black. They want more black people on a trail. And not only was I black on a trail, but I didn't look like a hiker. I had like color bandanas all over the place. My dreads was up. I looked like Captain Jack Sparrow. Like I looked nothing like a hiker. So not only was I black, but I stuck out like a sore thumb, not because I'm black, but also because I looked different. Well, and you said and, in the book, one of the things that people would say is like, hey, Rasta. All yeah, sudden, okay. Right? Like, and that was another thing where it got to the point where every time someone saw, and most of the reactions of me being on a trail was positive. Um, the most negative would be people thinking that I was a Rasta, uh, Rastafarian that was selling or had um, ganja. You know, you have ganja, let's smoke. You know, first, first thing that would come Whoa, out of Oh, that would be the first smoke. thing? Yes. Are you, you got ganja, let's smoke. And I was like, okay, man, it's, that's really? not, yeah. And it's not something that you would even say to someone out in the streets of New York City. You don't go up to someone and say, hey, man, I know you smoke, let's smoke. It's not, but for some reason, people felt, certain people, not everyone. But certain okay, you say people. that. However, I did have a conversation with a guy uh, a couple weeks ago who was like very straight edge and around like 20 years old. He, he was, he's in Colorado in Fort Collins. This person that he worked with, a white guy, comes up to him and he's black. And the white guy goes, you're black. Do you know where I can get some drugs from? Literally, just like that. Oh, so, it happens. Oh, it happens. It happens. It's, it's happened to me. It happens. Yes. But I wouldn't the way think that that would be the came, first like, thing someone says to you much. on a trail. Like, come on. Exactly. Exactly. And it didn't happen a lot. Uh, it happened a few times. In fact, I have a chapter called Not, uh, Not the Rasta, 
where, you know, it was nonstop people just coming up to me and saying. And I wonder, by the way, if you didn't have dreads, would they be saying that? Like, was it the color of your skin no, or was it the dreads? I don't know. I, I, I can't answer that. Uh, I know. We can't. We can't. We can speculate. But what's the point of that yeah. anyway? But I do think the dreads did help with the, the situation. <laughs> so I'm like so curious to know why uh, clearly you would figured out it was a thing and you've had some conversations since as you were talking about. And I want to get into that. Like, why is it a thing? But I'm like, okay, you mentioned the money thing. So skiing and snowboarding, right? I live in Colorado. I grew up doing that. Very white sport. It's expensive. <laughs> like I can barely afford it. Like it's so expensive. Golf is another one, right? Like there's these sports where I'm like, okay, it's really expensive to get into maybe like that explains some of it. But in my head, I'm like, hiking is fucking free. Literally put on your shoes and go into the mountains and you hike. <laughs> Unless you're doing what you're doing, which is even more of a smaller well, I, group of people too. Hiking is free. Hiking is free. Camping is not. I mean, is basically you get a tent for 20 bucks. Well, you, you can, but then, okay, I guess, I guess you can get, if you want to go to Walmart and get a $20. But no, seriously, that's a, like, or go and you yeah, hike you're right. overnight. You're right. It's you, not expensive. You're right. You could. And I, and I guess maybe since I threw a hike, then I want like a tent that can actually withstand the rain. Uh, yeah, yeah. You're doing tent. like, yes, yes. The version of hiking that you did is I, I consider myself a hiker. I would never do the, okay. I'll never say never. I probably will not do the through Appalachian trail. Um, but I feel like unless you're like going to go camping and like hike in camping and you really need all that gear, like you just wanted to go hike a 14er here no, in Colorado. 100%. I agree. Come 100%. on. I agree. So where's the disconnect? Okay. Well, we, and, and what I think you're asking me is why isn't there a lot more black people hiking the Appalachian? Yeah, yes. Or hike, not, or just not hike even the period. Period. Or just period. hiking period. The day and hikes again, like you were talking about. Though this is my right. first time hike. Why? Right, right. Um, and I, again, and I, we, I said this before when we talked um, earlier, that I, I don't speak for the entire Black community, but I can uh, tell you my experience and the people around me, my family and friends. And the one is uh, what we said, financial, the resources. We don't, we don't have them. We don't have them at all. Like, I, don't ha I didn't have, uh, my parents didn't have a tent or camping gear or any of that stuff that they can hand down to me. And they didn't take me hiking camping at all so that's one two is um knowledge like where would i know i'm i'm from brooklyn where would i know how would i know that i can go hiking in the woods unless my parents my family have done it or i learned about it in school somehow and even if they taught me that in school um how do i how do i get to that you know, like, and I didn't have a book. There wasn't a book like the Unlikely Through Hiker that sh there's a person, there's a dude on the cover that looks like me, you know, and it's called the Unlikely Through Hiker. Let's find out. Let me learn about this thing called yeah. hiking. There, there's no, there's nothing, no one taught me about it. I didn't know anything about it. And then the third thing I would say, so we have financial, we have knowledge, and we have lore. We have the, the idea that black, um, bad things happen to black people in the woods, there's history of it. There's, Somebody said that to me this morning and I was like, whoa. That's yes, me. Yes. And also growing like, up, not just not not just our parents and our our parents, but there's history and also what they show us, TV, movies, you know, you go into woods, who's in the woods? If you're in a cabin, who's in the woods? Jason with a machete ready to kill you, you know, like and also with history, you know, the Underground Railroad. We're going through the we're going through the woods. It's not fun. We're not hiking through. We're just going through the woods to get to to a safe place. We're going north. What happens in the woods? Black people get lynched, you know, things like that. Like it, It's not to get heavy about it, but it's not something positive. When we think about going on a day trip, we think about going to the beach. Or if you're from, you know, New York City, Central Park or, you know, like Coney Island or whatever to a, to a Yankee game. You know, we don't think about hiking in the woods. So what? So somebody just wrote here what you were just saying. Cost is one factor, but people people of color have a very have had a very tumultuous experience with the outdoors and public lands. It's what you were just talking about. I think that it is a. Uh, what's the word that I'm looking for? I mean, I've been checking my privilege 
in a lot of different ways. I mean, for a long time, but especially in the last two months, I would say. And thinking about going into the woods without any fear, like I'm afraid of the dark, right? Like those kinds of like boogeyman things, but it's never been a, from my history, afraid Mm -hmm. of going on a hike or into the woods or thinking about nature in that regard. And I'm like all of a sudden sitting here struck with, well, that is white privilege actually. Yeah. Well, I have, I have one story about my through hike and most stories are all positive. People are like, wow, you're on a trail. But there was one time where I was crossing, I was on a trailhead. I was crossing like a dirt, dirt road. And there was uh, locals on horseback. There was like maybe like four or five of them. And what year was this? I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, they were on horseback. Cause they were, um, they must've had a farm or something. And they were just, they were just, Totally. Riding their horse or whatever. You know, people still ride horses, right? I know. I'm just kidding. I was joking. <laughs> okay. Trying to lighten up the mood a little 18, bit. This was in 1865, <laughs> the Civil War. And, no, I I mean, through, and I was running through the woods. But if you think about where you're hiking, of course you're in rural areas where there's yeah. farmland and stuff like that. Of course. It makes so total this was sense. In, uh, this was in Virginia, if I'm not. No, no. Yeah, may, I think it was in, in Virginia. And I was crossing a dirt road and, um, sorry, I'm going to interrupt you one more time. And I promise I'm gonna listen to the story. Had you ever spent time in the South Derek before starting the AT? Mm-mm. No, I, be, I went to Florida a few times, but not in the rural South. No. I, okay. Which is an interesting experience in and of itself, a whole nother world. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I went to Atlanta for an Atlanta Braves game. But that I did, it was a one day trip. That was it. But I was never in the woods in Georgia. No. Yeah. I, totally. I saw the I saw the movie Deliverance. <laughs> ding, I, ding 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 ding. I know what happened. I want you to squeal like a pig, bud. <laughs> I gotta say something, and I don't think I brought this up ever. So this you might be the first person to hear this, and and it'll be on your podcast. We're making it unique, book. like you wanted. Here we go. But in, on on my um. While writing my book, in the beginning, I talk about I I, I talk about uh, my friend's reaction about me announcing that I was going to hike the Appalachian Trail, and she's a a, a Latina, a, a white a white and Puerto Rican, so but she's dark skin, um, and she was like, "What? What are you like?" She was in shock, and. Um, the one thing she kept, she mentioned was you've never seen, cause I said, you know what? I'm not going to be like other hikers. I'm going to bathe. I'm going to stay clean. I'm going to I'm going to look pretty on a trail. I'm going to be fresh and clean. And she yeah, was like, right. she was like, you've never seen the movie deliverance. You better, you better rethink that pretty boy. And, <laughs> and if you guys never seen the movie, see it. Cause there's something Fucked that up. happens. There's, it's messed up what happens to this dude. Just saying, screw like a pig. You'll, you'll understand what we're saying. And um, a lot of my older readers know about that. So I wanted to add that to the book because it was funny. Her reaction was like, um, you know, look at your pretty lips. Look at your pretty lips. You know, like talking about like talking like a hillbilly and stuff like that. And like they would love you. And I had it in the book and my publisher was like, I don't think that's good because it actually implies rape pretty much and they were like we can't we can't add this to to the book and I thought about it and I was like it it, it fit very well with what she was saying and the situation and how we have this idea of what's uh what the woods is all about and especially in the south and how you have hillbillies and rednecks and this and that my brother was one of those guys that was like dude there's a lot of rednecks down there. You should take a machete with you. They come in small size. You can strap to your chest and you can go and you'll be good. You'll be p- protected. Because my brother, again, like me, didn't know anything about it. All we know is this hillbillies and bad people that could harm us. It would definitely harm me the way I look because of the way I look. So they were like, you know what, let's not, let, let's not go there and add that because it does, uh, it, it does uh, you know, it implies rape and this and that. So I decided to change it up because I did want the book to be educational. I wanted the book to be read. Uh, I wanted to be. I wanted young readers to be able to read my book. 
Do you think but, that it really was about? Okay, okay, okay. But, but let me, let me, but let me, let me finish because please, I please. did want more readers. I, I, I did want um, the most amount of readers for this book, not because I want sales, but because I wanted people to know about the Appalachian Trail, know about hiking, to know that you can hike, and this is an amazing activity that's out there that people of color aren't doing for whatever reason, for the three reasons I brought up, or for whatever reason. And I wanted more people, I didn't want any barriers, any obstacles, any reason why people wouldn't read about this adventure. So I took it out because I didn't want that barrier. Also, another thing, I don't have curses in the book. I make up curses like Son of a Brooklyn Bridge and stuff like that, make it fun. But I wanted the I wanted parents to be able to read this book to their kids. And I'm glad I did because I get messages from readers saying, I just read I read this and now I'm reading it to my kids. And kid now my kids are curious about the outdoors, about hiking, about the AT. And if I, I had stories like that in my book, who knows if 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 they would have read it to their kids. Man, so I, mean, I got that. Like, and also as a an author, having editors tell you that this isn't, you know, you, you shouldn't add this or you should do this and that. A lot of a lot of writers don't like that. I'm I whatever makes my story pop out, whatever makes my story stronger, I don't care if you said this paragraph is boring. I will change it and make it better. And if I read it and see your point, don't just tell me it's boring. Just give me a point why you think it's boring. But give me, and if I understand, and if I get it, then I'll change it. And I'm, I'm lucky that my publisher, every, they didn't change much, but what they want to change changed. They explained it to me and I went, I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to change it this way. And I did mm -hmm. change that story, but I've never mentioned it before, so now you have the scoop. <laughs> awesome. I mean, it's, first of all, I am going to try to not interrupt you so much. First of all, I'll say that. Second of all. Um, no, no, you can. You can. And I told you you could. I know. But, it's just hard because I'm like, Bleh, but I want to hear Sometimes I get wrapped up in my story and I'm like, wait a minute, let me finish this. No. Well, now we still, but what we did, we went off track. We have to go back to talking about like the beginning and, and um, when you were starting in Virginia at that crossroads, because this is how we got off topic to talk about deliverance. Oh, you're good. You're good. So we'll go back there. But what I want to talk about now is you said you're published. First of all, publishers, white publishers, black publishers, pe people of color. Um, my publishing company, they, uh, it's the Appalachian Mountain Club. So they're all about hiking the outdoors, the Appalachian Trail. Um, and they're all about diversifying just like the ATC. And it's one of the reasons why I was able to get published because I did something. Cool, where, okay. Yeah. So uh, what happened was I got off the trail and decided that I was going to write a manuscript of my adventure and decided that I needed somewhere secluded where I can start this. And this is a magical thing about the Appalachian Trail. I was hiking one day and I said, it was halfway through my hike or maybe later. And uh, I said, I, I wanna write about the Appalachian Trail but I can't go back to New York City because there's too many distractions. You know, I was, I'm, I've been there my entire life. I go back there, I'm gonna go back to the reg my regular routine. So I said, Talking to myself with the hiking, the AT uh, gods heard me and they, and I said, I would love to have uh, a cabin I can go start, I can start writing because that's where authors go to write a masterpiece. You know, they go to cabins. Or Hell yeah, yeah, we've all seen where, movies. And I've said this before, or where teenagers go to get murdered by, you know, <laughs> Jason or something, you know. <laughs> but, but I said, I wish I had a cabin I can go to, I can start writing my manuscript and this and that. And a hiker friend, his, uh, his family said, hey, we have a cabin in Pennsylvania. You can stay there for free for three months and you start writing a book. And I was like, man, this is crazy. But yes, that's some trail magic right there. The universe so, works in magical ways. Right. So I started writing my book. Um, and I, don't, I, got, I, I lost track of where I was going with this story. Um, we were oh, talking about your publishing group and how they want to diversify. Okay. So I, perfect. You're good. I, um, I started writing the book and as I was writing the book I was very vocal about my adventure and how great it was and the Appalachian Token Service, um, the Appalachian Mountain Club all these uh, hiking organizations noticed 
that I would talk about it. So they would send me out to do talks. And I did a bunch of different talks. And I knew I had to continue doing that because this was going to be my first book. And unless they knew who I was and I started a blog and everything, no one's going to just buy my book because I say, hey, I just wrote a book, buy, buy my book. I needed to put myself out there and I, people needed to know who I was. And because of it, um, the Appalachian Mountain Club saw I had a voice, saw I had a story to tell. And they were like, hey, let's let's get your manuscript. And as soon as I sent it, they were like, we're going to publish it. You know, so I had to get myself out there. So they were all they're all about inclusiveness. Uh, and also they wanted the story to be told and they thought my story was uh, unique enough to share. So, yes, they are at AMC. They're a hiking community, a hiking um, organization, and they're basically all white. But it's it's beyond that. It's beyond that. It's more Ooh. of telling a hiking story, because one quick thing. I don't go around saying I was, it's called the unlikely through hiker, but I don't go around saying I was a, I'm a black hiker. I don't do that. I share my story and people listen to my story. And if, when it, when it comes out that I'm a, you'll see me, I'm, I'm, I'm a black dude. You see me, I'm a person of color. Then they're like, Oh, okay. And that's the reason why I love the cover big ups to my publishing company. because they I the love that color. That cover is so good for a thousand so, reasons. I mean, yeah. Uh, so you you are making me th- god there's a thousand things i could mention right now that i'm like ah oh, which one to dig into derek oh. um <laughs> it's funny because there's a guy who just commented sam i don't know if he's still watching um but he is an eritrean american Identi- and he gets labeled as a black person you know in this country all the time just because it is and he had to learn why people were ta- asking him that like how do are you how do you just do yoga and be a teacher and he's like what are you talking about and had to learn it when people were like great to see you out here on the trail and you're like yeah you too and then you realize why they're saying it to you um and the whole is reason I'm bringing that is- did you speak to him um did you do a podcast with this gentleman yeah. Did yoga yeah I, yeah I listened to that podcast oh was- amazing so yeah. he's listening to you now which is cool awesome. he's great. um so one of the things that that you just said is like, I'm not mentioning that I'm black. You read it, you could see me, whatever. And when, before we got on the podcast today, you're like, yeah, we can talk about all this, but like, let's not make it heavy. Like, let's talk about this other stuff. And I just am kind of bringing all of those things together. Like, why? Because I find that like, some people want to come out right away. I'm a black American. I'm writing this book and I want to share my journey. And Harry asked here, like, have you become an ambassador for people of color? But what I'm hearing from you is like, you don't want to share your story to share it because you are a black guy. You just want to share your story to share your story is what it sounds like to me. But I don't know. I'm, I want to bridge. Okay. Tell me I'll, about that. I'll, I'll, I'll be clear about it. I am sharing my, my AT story. Yes. And because it was so amazing the hiking community is the most amazing thing that i've ever experienced these people are they embraced me they saw i had no experience at all my first day they didn't judge me there was no judgment they helped me i didn't know how to pitch my tent i didn't know how to use my my (laughs) mini stove i didn't know how to hang my bag not once was there like dude why are you here yeah no they just helped me they were like we're gonna help you along they didn't even have to say that they just helped me It's like an unspoken family the second you're out there, yeah? Yes. It's an instant. You meet somebody, you're instant friends. And within a day or two, you're best friends. And and after that, you're family. I have, my hiking family is so huge. I moved to Asheville where it's a hiking town and I have peeps here. I have so many like peeps. So that community is amazing and they embraced me. And um, I wanted to share that story. That being said... I do, and I, again, I don't have to come out and say I'm black, you know, this is my story. But, and I think you may have mentioned this in one of your podcasts. There's a difference between a white person saying, hey, this hiking, this thing called um, the Appalachian Trail that you can hike, this hiking activity is great. You should do it. But from you saying that, and or me, a black person, or just a black person saying, hey, I hiked the Appalachian Trail. I did this hiking activity. I love this. There's a big difference between the two. 
who mm. who do you think the black person is going to listen to? Some a kid that sees someone that looks like him or someone that doesn't look like him that you know I don't know who this person is. Of Although he may not know the black person, but where do you feel comfortable? So I knew that I wanted to reach not just like black people, but you know kids that never heard about hiking or the Appalachian Trail, about going to the outdoors, or heard about it, never done it before. I want to start you know doing like some guiding some hikers to do some trails here in in Asheville. Yes. Um so, yeah, so it's, it's you know, it goes back to like what yeah. like Go Netflix and all these TV shows are like we're talking about media and books like we need full representation of all the people that live in this country, right? So that everybody yeah. knows that everybody can do everything. Yes. It's like wild what you were saying in the beginning like my parents never went hiking so they didn't show me how to do it. Well, the, I, and it's true. The only reason why I started skiing is because my father grew up skiing. So then I grew up skiing. It gets passed on. And it's just like, I'm thinking, you know, when these, this movement really started happening in, at the end of May, we call it like June 1st, um, started to realize how many people that I know have never had a conversation with a person that didn't look like them before. So mm -hmm. how would you ever have the opportunity to pass on these things that are part of, let's say your culture, but not my culture to somebody else if we're not interacting with each other? Yeah, I, and we spoke about this earlier. Um, I think we need, we need everyone involved in this. You know, we need, if, and I've heard this, this isn't coming from me, I've heard someone else say this, that if you're white and you don't have black friends, get a get a black friend talk about conversations like this because you know what we can't do this ourselves we need help we need everyone to agree in this it can't just be black people saying hey we need justice we need to feel equal we need to feel safe it can't just be us saying it it needs to be everyone saying it because that's how the change happens and i also think that it can't just be white people being like you don't have to have this fear that we've been told, you know, like, let's give the you example of like the black man that. as a criminal. No, you can't voice that when it's happening to us. You can't say no. You can't be scared of us because um, this won't happen to you. No, you can't tell us that because it's happened. It's happened to all of us. So yeah. not all of us, I shouldn't say that, but it's happened to a lot of, you know, black people. And we see it. You know, like we yes, what I was referring to was like you're saying that like your friend and your brother, I think it was your brother you said, said, oh, my God, don't go to the south or be watch out for the hillbillies, whatever. The point of me saying that is like white people have irrational and unfounded fears of black people because of whatever they've been told for however many years. Right. By government, politics, whatever. Yeah. I think that what you're saying is that other communities also have those fears and stereotypes of other communities. We kind of all have them. They play out in really different ways, right? But I think that it's important that in these conversations, all of us are starting to be like, actually, let me just get to know you as a person. Let me go to the South for myself um, mm -hmm. and see what it's like. And I also understand that there are levels of fear there of putting yourself in that situation that I might never be able to understand. Right. Like there are certain things where it's not so simple to be like, let me go and find out for myself. But you did it and you found that most of the time you were embraced like family, not threatened with machetes. Mm -hmm. Right. I think that that's equally as a, equally important story to share as it is for white people to be like, hey, actually, I went into this neighborhood that supposedly was unsafe and I met the most amazing people that embraced right. me. Da, 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 da. People, people need to hear that story because there's a shift now. And I'm starting to see where people are starting to awaken to um, with, with what's going on right now. And I think exactly. this year more than ever. Um, because yeah, I have, I have a, an, a short, I have stories galore, but this would be a short one. On the AT, I had, and I won't mention which hiker, and he, but he's a good friend. We were hiking together and we had to go into town. It was like five miles um, off the trailhead. And we didn't want to hike an extra five miles after hiking 20 miles. We were just like, let's hitchhike, you know, let's get, and during hike and in hiking community uh, towns, you'll get, you'll get picked up because it's people know about the 18. They know that it, there's hikers and they're going to need a ride to, you know, whatever store to resupply. And we were, we were walking for town and we're all together and we got the thumbs up and no one would pick us up. They just drive right by. And I mentioned, and we're still in, in, in the deep south, 
And I mentioned, I said, hey, look, what if I walk ahead and maybe you guys can get a ride? And if you can, just, you know, pick me up. If, if not, you know, I'll keep walking. And my friend was like, what are you talking about? That's ridiculous. That's, that's, not, that's not a thing. And to- totally belittling my, my thoughts and my experience. And, it, and it goes a little bit further than that. But what happened was, while we were all talking, it was maybe four or five of us, I little by little started walking a little faster. And, and we were already walking for 15 minutes, 20 minutes. I knew where this was going to go. We were going to end up walking all the way there. Um, and I decided to walk ahead. And within five minutes, they got picked up. And, and then he was like, hey, Fab. My trail name is, is fabulous. Um, another story. But, and then they picked me up and I got in a car and, and, and we went. So fast forward to a month ago, after, after all this craziness that's going on, oh, that hiker man. friend sent me a message. And he said, dude, this has been eating me up for the last few weeks. It should have been eating me up for the last few years. But I didn't want to believe that we still lived in an, in an America that was still racist. He said, I was ignorant. I just thought it wasn't, it wasn't a thing. And I'm sorry for making little of what you felt, what you knew, your experience. And I apologize. And I totally forgot all about that. He's such a good person that I was like, whatever, I don't, it didn't bother me. But for him to say that and then bring it back up and I said, oh, wow, that was a thing. And I remember that because he did hurt my feelings. Like it was, you know, it was, it may have just been like a quick thing and I, I let it go and he's still my, my, a close friend, but dismissing my experience and dismissing that this is a thing you can't do that. You have to understand, even if you don't, you may not believe it, but don't quickly dismiss it like that. You need to listen well, to stories. That's the thing of like, I don't know if you've ever read the book or heard of, um, so you want to talk about race. Yeah. But one of the things that the author says in there is like, if somebody says to you, and specifically a person of color or black person says to you, this is racist, you stop and listen. You don't get to sit there and say, no, it's not because mm-hmm. it isn't about me and my perspective or Mm -hmm. my experience. And I'm never going to understand it in the same way. That's when you just shut up and listen. Um, And I do think in a way, some people are listening and reflecting more and coming back with that, but God, it's so true. And I mean, uh, it's like, as much as I want to say it is changing, then you read the news about these people still like, I mean, how have the cops not been arrested that killed Breonna Taylor? Like what the fuck? And Elijah McClain- but here, here's the thing. Here's here's another thing is that it's been happening for centuries. Yeah, this isn't know? new. Okay, it's it's not new. And I heard you mention this that um, uh, that quote that Will Smith mentioned that it's been happening forever, but now it's being it's being filmed. You know, like it's it's not a new thing, and it's not more. It's just being filmed. So yeah, you're gonna you're gonna constantly see that. But what I'm seeing more of is people retaliating. People more of there's more of a voice. The protests, they were amazing. There was more protests ever. This was like bigger than the-, the, the civil Literally rights. the largest civil rights movement in history. It's the largest, exactly. So, and I, and I saw that. I lived in, 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 in New York City. I've only been here two, two weeks, but right, I lived in the mid- center of Harlem, right middle of Harlem. And it was always a protest almost every day. Um, but it was peaceful. It, there was no violence. It was peaceful. And it was just voicing- Yep what what the injustice that we want justice you know yep i think that at this point with social media with the news with this movement going on for so long all these protests if you are not aware of what's going on your ignorance is a choice at this point and you're making a very racist statement by not figuring it out like educate your come on um and just so to step back on harry's question he asked if i was an ambassador for the at um for people of color of people of color what did um, he say exactly? Yeah, I, would, I, think, I think he just I was, the hiking community and outdoors, yeah, people the of color in general. I right. am. A, I feel like I am a voice because I do have a book, and people look toward me. I have people sending me readers sending me messages saying, "Hey, I've always wanted to hike the AT, and then after reading your book, I'm going to do it." Or uh, other hikers that have done it and they read my book, and it brings back memories. I think now I have a responsibility to do that. Because I have this book and I love sharing my story. And I feel like, yes, I'm going to have. And I would love more people of different colors and flavors 
uh, to do this. So yes, I would say yes. I don't, I don't have a badge and I don't go around saying that, but yes, I feel like I have a voice, I have the platform and now I have a responsibility to do it. So yes. Absolutely. And I think it's unbelievably beautiful what you're doing. You're paying it forward because yes, I mean, you know, now the medicine, the beautiful gift that being in the woods is, I mean, we're animals at the end of the day. We're not meant to live in a building. We're, we were made from the nature. 100%, we're meant yeah. to be out there. And one of the things that, so have you ever heard of the book on trails? I have, I don't think I've read it though. Okay. It's another through hiker. Um, and who, who wrote it? Uh, his name's Michael. Some, I don't know. Harry, if you're still listening, I think Harry's the one that told me to read that book. Um, Another thing, when I, when I was writing my book, I decided not to read any uh, any hiking books because I didn't want it to kind of like- Taint or, yeah, taint influence you. Into, like, what I, was I think writing. that's smart. But, but I do that's have smart. a lot of hiking books that I want to read. Well, now that you've done it, you can go read others. Um, so one of the things that he was saying is that the reason that so many people quit is not because it's physically hard or anything like that, not to say that it isn't, but it's the mental challenge because you're by right. yourself. There's a lot the of time. reasons. Yes, financial, um, mental- uh, Something happens at home and you got to get off the trail, uh, Lyme but disease. It's that, that solo be being in your own head that people yes. just go people crazy can't be over. by themselves. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm my best company. I'm fine. <laughs> I'm fine. Which I is the most beautiful gift that we can give ourselves. Yeah. Me too. I had to take that on really hard. But um, I would, again, you know, and I, it's, it's, thinking about worlds that maybe like traditionally haven't seen so many people of color for me, the spiritual world is definitely one. I think about my Burning Man community and who's a part of that. And it's pretty white. Um, and thinking yeah. about being uh, alone on yourself on those trails, my mind immediately goes to meditation and spirituality and the universe. And um, is there anything in that world that you want to mention or talk about right now on this platform? And while there might be people listening that have never ventured into that world what it's world done world. for you and opening the door of you mean the hiking world you mean just the nature as medicine nature. and the universe and spirituality and being with you like you can't mm -hmm. take mm -hmm. yourself on and become your own best friend i feel like without all of 100, that 100 percent. so i'm actually i'm doing this thing where i'm meditating every day i have a challenge i challenge myself 365 consecutive days of meditation Stop. and i'm at like, what day are you on I'm at 330 something. And I've tried it several times where I would do a hundred and then kind of something happened. And I, and I'm like, Oh man, it was a hundred. I got to start up. And I, it happened where it was 50, uh, 50 days and another hundred. And I kept going back. I said, like, you know what? I'm going to keep doing it. So it took me two years to get where I'm at right now. So I'm almost at 365 days. Wow. And I, and I'm, I'm huge. Uh, I, I love using essential oils and I use essential oils for meditation, for my workouts, for running and this and that. Um, and I'm all about meditation. And I feel that in order for, and I'm speaking for myself, for me, to, and I'm a people person, for, in order for me to understand other people and to be able to communicate with other people, I need to know myself. I need to know my mind. I need to know where I'm at uh, mentally. So I do meditate and people are like, people will say, Hey, it's so hard. Like I get distracted, this and that. Not every meditation that I do is, is golden. I don't see like spirits and, and I don't have all the answers. There's some, there's some uh, days where I have stories that run through my head or all these different distractions. And I'm like, that was not a great meditation, but it was the, the act of doing it, having that routine. Like if you have, um, it's taking the pause that, in, that you have thoughts that come into your head. There's a reason why they come in, take it, take it in, try to, cause meditation, you do it for many reasons to clear your mind, to, to solve a problem, to, you know, like a bunch of different things. And if that thought comes in, let it come in, take it in and then just let it go out and try to clear your mind again, but don't fight it because if you fight it, then it goes against what meditation is about. You just let it happen. And it, there's no wrong or right way to do it. I can tell you how I do it, but you can just sit down, stare at the wall and just be, just be in, you know, yourself and you'll be fine. You're meditating. Uh, but I, be, I agree. You need to have a, a, a solo, like you need to have a, an alone place for, even if it's a few minutes. What? Okay. So, Okay. I agree with you. It is a practice. It can be one minute. It can be 10 minutes. It can be an hour, whatever works for you. The whole point is to consciously take a pause where you're just being with you and yourself. Right. Um, 
what has it done for you? Why meditation? And, and like, yeah, why are you doing this 365 day challenge? Clearly it's doing something for your life. Mm-hmm. Um, it probably, I would say it's the same reason why I decided not to come back to New York City after I threw hike the Appalachian Trail. I, my brain is like squirrel, it races all over the place. I, and I'm a writer, I'm a storyteller, and I'm constantly like coming up with ideas, things that I want to work on, projects I want to do. Um, the Virgo in me is very organized. This has to be with this, like that. So my, my brain is very hectic. Uh, and I think that helps me. And now I have a porch. I've never had a porch in my entire life. I'm from New York City in a small apartment. My my office right now is bigger than my my studio apartment I had in New York City. Okay. <laughs> so now we live, I live in a house, we have a porch. The 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 scene is mountains. So every morning I'll have my coffee, I'll sit in my coffee, meditate, and just I hear birds and it's just it's quiet. So it helps me start my day. That's how I start my day every day. Um, and before I started doing that, um, I always had a moment to myself. I would read uh, with my coffee. That was a form of just being, setting myself. Because unlike other people, it takes me, when I was through hiking, I, it would always take me a couple hours to get going. So people would leave camp at eight, I would leave at 10. So I was always the last person to leave because it takes me a while, just not only just to get my stuff in my uh, backpack, but just to, situate myself i'm not that i'm not that guy that gets up in the morning and goes i need to like slowly come back to get into it yeah yeah. it takes me a while um and i like doing it that way because if i don't then it could be a stressful day for sure um and basically i think that what you're saying if i can sum it up is find the things that work for you to become your best self to put you in that zone where you can just be and go and find what, whatever that is for you and, and make it work. Um, so, gosh, there were so many. I wanted to talk to you about race and racism in the publishing world and being an author um, well, and more about New York. <laughs> we might have to have you come back, but I want to give yeah. you an opportunity, Derek, if there is a message that you want to share or another little story, anecdote, anything you want to share now about you and your experience living in America uh, as you, which by the way, we didn't even mention this. I know that your mother is Latina. Um, and so there's a lot more to your identity that we didn't even talk about. Um, but anything that you want to share. And I feel like you are, I see the peace sign behind you. I know that you're oh, yeah. light and want to like reach people in the world, the message of love, hope, inspiration, action, change. What can we do? The floor is yours and I'm okay. going to be quiet and listen to you. Okay, well, we, we talked about this in the beginning when um, you reached out and wanted me to uh, do this podcast with you. And uh, I listened to some of it, uh, some of the, your past podcasts. And um, I didn't want it to be uh, a heavy podcast where, you know, it, 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 we talked about um, my black life, where why it's so hard to be black. Um, I want it to be um, more of why it's why it's so amazing to be alive right now, even in a tough situation. I love that. And, I love that. And I always and I've always been trying. I always try to stay positive. The book is and I'll, and I know you don't have a copy, but I'm I'm going to send you a copy. I um, think it's better now though because now you know me and you can sign it and maybe write like a nice totally. note. Totally, 100%. I'm so excited. Five, five hours though, five hours for the sun. No, I'm kidding. What, you got <laughs> it, give me your memo. <laughs> um, but I want it, I know there's different voices for the black community. There's, and I have, um, and I won't mention, but I have black friends that when they talk about um, black people, they're very defensive about it. And I don't want to be that person I'm going to be honest, I haven't had bad encounters in my entire life. And I like to think that it's the way I carry myself and the way I approach people because I do love talking to people. I do love meeting people. Talk to my hiking friends, uh, the the group that I hiked with. Like I said earlier, I was always the last person to get into camp because I would stop and talk to someone. You know, so um, I just love... I love being around people and it's all, and it's going to sound cheesy, but it's all love. It's one of the mantras 
uh, and it's in the book, uh, is peace, love, and all that good stuff. And I would write it in um, register logs along the Appalachian Trail. I would write whatever was going on that day, and I would end it that way, peace, love, and all that good stuff, because it would remind me um, as I was writing it that that's what I'm about. Yeah, I mean, there's things that get me angry. Um, there's things that upset me, but I, I try to give it the positive uh, twist. I um, mean, it doesn't always work that way, but if you approach a situation in the best way you can in a positive way, then you're going to get positive reactions. Um, it, it's the difference between someone saying, hey, um, you're black on the AT and responding, and what? What about that? Or saying, yeah, like, what do you think about that? Or, you know, if you don't, you know, if you don't want to, if you don't want to hear it, then just say, yeah, I, I've heard that before. But there's the way you respond to people. And I embraced the way I embraced every anytime someone came up to me and said, you're black on the trail, I wanted to hear why they thought that was important for them to say that to me. Um, not in a, in a manner, I would say, I want to hear your story. I want to hear what's totally. going on. Um, so I can share it and put it, you know, and I, I can start sharing it and explain it in, in, in my book uh, and people can read about it and learn about it because you don't, you don't learn from other people. If you're, if you're arguing with them, if you get defensive and you're like, no, this is the way it is. Tell me why you think this way. And we go from there. Amen. Just like you said earlier, let me explain myself as a black person. Don't say, no, it's not racism. Listen. And then you can, we can go from there and learn. Amen. Get curious, question everything it's the come on um and i i don't think that what you said is cheesy in any kind of way it is all about love we get two choices love or hate that's where you get to come from all the time love hate. isn't hate so hard it's so hard it takes so much more energy it takes so much more energy you grow old hating no oh it's oh, terrible love. look at me i'm 60 years old this is all about love you're not 60 i was about to be like what the like come on okay it's love man <laughs> bullshit loving a little fluff loving all that good stuff um so yeah i mean i think that at the end of the day no not i think i know we don't get to choose what happens but we certainly get to choose how we respond and react so you didn't get to choose that you didn't get picked up on the, by the car but you got to choose how you responded a reaction exactly um, and I think that it's so important to remember that right now because there's some crazy shit that's happening in the world and continuing to happen. We don't get to choose this right now, but we get to choose how we respond. Every second in our response is going to mean and dictate everything right now 100%. in a lot of regards. So, um, gosh, thank you for being awesome. We're going to have you back. Um, I don't want to be the last one to say anything. So let's end it with uh, how you sign off on all of your trail writings or however you want, but I'm going to let you be the last one to sign us off, Derek. By the way, we didn't finish that one story, but- I know, with the crossing, we'll, trust we'll me. Leave it. We'll leave it at that so then people can come back and okay. hear that one story. That's how we're going to okay. start it next time. I like that. Um, but, uh, whenever I do my, um, my talks, my uh, book club talks or my lives or whatever, I always just say peace, love, and all that good stuff. I love that. Okay, so um, if anybody is still listening, you can um, read Derek's book, The Unlikely, is that what, yes. Yeah, the I'm Unlikely sure. Through Hiker. Um, let's lift it up a little bit so we can see the title there. Um, and you can also find him on Instagram at Derek Lugo. Um, we've also put his website up on Facebook here. We. Clearly, it sounds like we'll be having a round two of this, so stay tuned. And on that note, thank you so, so much. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the One World, Your Story podcast. If you enjoyed hearing this story and you wish to hear more, make sure you subscribe to us on iTunes and YouTube. And of course, follow us on Instagram at One World, Your Story. From all of us here at the One World, Your Story podcast, we are sending you so much joy and love. Have a wonderful rest of your day.